Hey everyone, Chris here at Ferngloat Farm. This is the uh, early May autumn edition of um, our update. And um, I'm sitting next to the Hugh culture beds just here on the ground. And you can see they're no longer with us. We've um, actually pulled them out because I, during the summer it was so dry that uh, most of the plants in there died. So it was a bit of a waste of time. They actually took up each about two cubic metres worth of um, organic matter. And that that organic matter was better found, was better spent elsewhere on the property uh, mulching the fruit trees. With the recent dry summer, uh, we've decided to add some extra water capacity. We almost ran out of water, it got down to about 20,000 litres, and we've added in a new tank. Um, and part of that is we excavated a flat site behind our garden shed, and that was all excavated by hand. And what the great benefit of that is that we've added a lot more um, planting space and that's in front of us here and as part of that we're running a trial of different garlics and we've got about 30 different varieties. With the raised veggie beds we've uh, reallocated them so that the path is now wider and it's also uh, removed some of the beds that were in slightly windy positions and they were underperforming, they're actually drying out and behind some of these veggie beds we're growing um, a lot of geraniums and they act as a windbreak for the veggies and the veggies actually quite like that. Comfrey is a great companion plant and you can see here it's with the grapefruit and that grapefruit actually has a huge amount of fruit on it which will ripen over the next couple of months. I'm actually, um, I actually have access to a whole lot of comfrey so I'm going to actually plant it right through the food forest. Strawberries are an endangered species here. Everything eats strawberries, including the dogs, which doesn't really help me much. But um, you can see here the, that um, the wallabies actually previously jumped on the, the bird netting and squashed it down and managed to eat all of the uh, runners through the, uh, the bird netting. And um, the strawberries are now slowly bouncing back and they're producing runners that are extending throughout the area. They'll probably need another year to recover before they produce uh, the amount of fruit we were getting in prior years. We've also included some grapes and we've strung some wires up so that in the following years we can train them onto the wires. And you can see down here this is Pinot Noir. We've also got some strawberry grapes and some Sultana grapes. No dig potato beds are actually performing really, really well. Each of those buckets contains about one, more than one and a half kilos worth of potatoes. And they have holes in the bottom, so all you have to do to actually collect all the potatoes is to lift the tub up and everything falls out the bottom. The cottage garden below the um, veggie beds is actually um, turned into a jungle with the recent rains and um, cooler temperatures. It's actually home to a lot of lizards and um, frogs and small birds. And the bees also love it because it produces flowers all year round. And as soon as it becomes above 10 degrees Celsius, they're out as they are today. And the bees are still happily active given it's late autumn. The more organic matter we build in the soil, the more that um, things start to self-seed. And you can see here there's some uh, feral potatoes and they just, um, they've grown all by themselves and we haven't watered them or done anything to them. They're, they'll just produce some tubers for us. Right next to it is a wild cabbage, and that's quite edible. And just in here, there's a wild nasturtium, and that just um, runs really nicely. It's got a, quite a quite a peppery taste to it. It's lovely. Behind here, you can see um, French sorrel just growing off in the distance there, and that's um, a prolific self-seeder, which the wombats and the wallabies love. Um, just over here. You can see this is some sort of Asian green, and it looks like a uh, wombok or a thing. It's definitely quite edible. I'm also growing a uh, kangaroo apple here, which the uh, the native birds love. It's a decoy fruit, sort of the same family as the nightshade family, which also includes potatoes and tomatoes. This is actually an edible fruit, and it um, grows into quite a good perennial tree. Um, some people like it. Um, I don't really like it, I find it's got a soapy taste, but, you know, it is edible. The other great thing about this time of year is that the with the cooler temperatures and a bit of extra rain, the herbage has really recovered its sheen and looks beautiful and green now. A fellow Permi asked me about 
growing wattle trees and one of my favourite trees here is the uh, blackwood. It's a broad leaf, long leaf tree. They live for about 150 years. They're also nitrogen fixing and um, they create a lot of um, litter on the ground which decomposes pretty quickly so they build up soil underneath them. Uh, and they're quite a good local tree. And um, you don't need to pay for these trees, you can just go and pick the seeds off them and usually the seeds are on the tree between about January and about about now which is about late Mar May. When you get up close to the tree you can see that um, there are literally hundreds of seeds all over this tree and they're so easy to propagate it's a joke. Anyway we'll just go and literally grab some off the tree and put them in a bucket and we'll prepare them when I get back home. Anyway, five minutes work and you've literally got hundreds, maybe even thousands of trees in there. The last step is you pour hot but not boiling water into the bucket and then let that sit for 24 hours. Once it's sat there for 24 hours, they're ready to plant out. Depending on the temperature, the uh, blackwoods only take a couple of weeks to start sprouting and this is a uh, few weeks after that. These blackwoods here are two years old and the tree lucerns in here are just over a year old. These blackwoods are about three years old. Most of the deciduous fruit trees are now starting to turn or have turned and um, we're not left with much in the way of fruit from them. Uh, here's a medlar and this is one of the final uh, fruits of the year. It's actually quite nice but you have to let them get very overripe. They taste like uh, dates to me um, but some people uh, dispute that and you can see through the rest of the uh, food forest most of the trees are now bare and um, you can see a couple of pears and some of the uh, some of the Asian pears up in the background there. Uh, most of the citrus will still keep producing well into winter so that's a good reliable source of fruit but uh, the rest of the orchard is um, pretty quiet Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch.